In the previous video, we enabled monitoring of the Zabbix host and set up the Zabbix agent. Now, in this video, we will add a check that monitors whether a certain file exists. An item is an instruction for a Zabbix to check a certain system parameter time and again. You can define which computer should do the check, how often the check is done, and for how many days the recorded values should be stored in the database. Let's create a new item. I change to Configuration Hosts, and as you can see here, there is the Zabbix server, which is actively monitored. Click on Items, and here you can see all the items that are configured for the server. Now we want to create a new item. Create Item button can be found in the upper right corner. Now Zabbix asks us for several settings that it needs to create the new item. The name is just a human readable description of this item. We can enter here presence of slash temp slash test. Monitoring a file is best done using the Zabbix agent. There are several ways to get information. The key is the actual machine readable description for Zabbix, how to get information on this parameter. In this case, we can just click on select and we get a list of standard items that the Zabbix agent supports. In the section with the items starting with VFS, you can find several checks that deal with files and file systems. The most appropriate check here is vfs.file.exists. It checks if a certain file exists. It returns 0 if the file does not exist, or 1 if the file exists. You can find a complete reference of all the supported item keys in the documentation on zabbix.com. For example, this is where the vfs.file.exists item is documented. So I'm selecting this check. It gets inserted into this text box. And instead of file, I'm entering slash temp slash test. So the parameter to this check is the name of the file we want to monitor. I can leave the host interface untouched. The type of information is numeric because it returns 0 or 1. The data type is decimal. We don't have any unit because units are usually for something like bytes, seconds or degrees Celsius. The update interval means how often the item is fetched. In this case, we are impatient because we want to get results quickly, so we turn this down to 10 seconds. The keep history describes for how many days the recorded information is stored in the database. In this example, we would get a value every 10 seconds and store the entire information for 90 days. I'm setting this to 1. Keep trends value is set to 365 days. Trends are average values of an hour each. We will deal with this later. In this case, we also set it to 1. There is a number of applications, and as I explained earlier, the applications are just groups of items. In this case, I will just choose the existing application called General. The status of this item is enabled by default, so we can just save it. Using this tiny filter link, you can enlarge or shrink the filter section up here, which gives you an easier way to find items, especially if you have a lot of them. We can click on General in the Applications line and filter for all items that are assigned to the general application. You can see that the new item we just created is here, and it also has a green check mark, which means that is actively checked. To see what is currently checked, we can go to Monitoring, Latest Data, expand the General section. Currently, the value is zero. This is pretty expected, because there is no such file yet. Let's create one. Touch slash TMP slash test. I'm using the touch command here, which is just creating an empty file. I'm going back to the web interface, reloading the page, and as you can see, the last value has just changed from 0 to 1, so Zepix has already picked up that the file is now there. So that concludes this video. We now have a working item that checks whether a file exists. In the next video, we will add a trigger to tell Zepix what the desired state of this item is.